Michelle, I want to go medical on you here. All of this has been a huge technological medical curve, a learning uh, curve as well. What have you learned about ventilators? A month ago, six weeks ago, they were front and center is a desperate need. What have you learned in the last two months about ventilators in this pandemic? Well, good morning, Tom. Um, ventilators uh, have been absolutely critical as we fight uh, to help individuals survive uh, this illness. Um, and we have uh, seen improvements uh, in the availability of them. Um, and as uh, some individuals are, are um, recovering and able to be extubated, um, we then, of course, you know, would have those ventilators available for others. Um, uh, they, um, they truly are um, remarkable. They're, uh, they're interesting, too, though, in, you know, there's been some discussions as well behind the scenes as we're thinking, trying to think bigger about how do we really, um, how do we make the best use of our technology uh, while also protecting our staff and protecting our, our PPE? So there has been, um, you know, some uh, work by engineers, by nurses, by others. Um, you know, how can we maybe uh, be using those ventilators maybe from a distance? Um, but again, there's so much that we still need to do uh, and, yeah. and far that we need to go. So right now we're, we're pretty stable, at, at least I can say in the Johns Hopkins system, our ventilator uh, situation is, is stable at the moment. Uh, Michelle, there are a number of worrying reports about uh, blood clots being formed because of the virus. How much do we understand about the linkage between this? Right. Uh, that, too. There's, there are more questions than answers, I think, uh, at this point. Um, again, uh, many are, are studying what is this uh, connection? Is it a direct result of the virus itself? Um, is it uh, really more a correlation of the level of inflammation, the damage to our blood vessels uh, throughout the body? To what extent uh, does fever play into this? Um, uh, but uh, there are some people who may be more uh, susceptible to developing clots. Um, we certainly do treat individuals uh, prophylactically and, and, and watch very closely, um, but we're still Still, uh, we're still gathering evidence to really understand the, the specific um, risk in, within COVID as maybe opposed to other illnesses. I mean, what do we know about, you know, other symptoms that actually persist once the infection clears? Are, are patients no longer, you know, be able to pass it on but could still be sick for, you know, sick for many weeks or months? Um, certainly, you know, the convalescent time can be long. Um, a lot of it depends upon, uh, you know, the underlying circumstances of each individual person. Um, in terms of being able to um, pass the virus, uh, there, there is a time frame for the most part um, where you would be uh, able to, to pass that and for others to contract it. Um, uh, again, really not clear. Um, that seems to be for, for you know, a, a few weeks while that viral load is, um, is high. And unfortunately, our challenge is that some people um, do not show symptoms, but can be carrying this virus and can be sharing <laughs> this virus uh, unknowingly uh, with others, um, which is why uh, there is all of this um, very... Uh, very Michelle? thoughtful and um, a discussion on this. Yep. Yes.